I brought my fiddle. Wanna listen? Welcome back, everyone. I know it's been a while, but we're going to jump into an updated tutorial for all the basic things you should know in this land is my land. Before we really get rolling, I want to let everybody know this is just a really basic tutorial. On my channel, I go into great detail on most aspects that are discussed here. And you can check out all those videos at CK Generations for This Land Is My Land. And they really will benefit you a lot if you go into all of those. So without further ado, let's get started. As with any game, you have the options to change your settings. So you have your audio, your gameplay, and you can even set it up for a controller and you can custom set your controls or see what controls you can use in the game. I actually suggest everybody take a look at these before you start playing the game to get familiar with what you will use later on. In the bottom left hand corner you see offline mode. This is for the social chat that you will see in game uh, between players. You can turn it off if you want a more immersive game style. So once you start your game, you will see where all your save slots are. You can have up to three at a time. Be careful not to delete these when you want to start a new one. Name selection is very important because it gives you perks or penalties that will follow you through the rest of the game. This also changes every month, so the algorithm is not constant. Something to take into account also is each of the what I would call spirit animals that you get to choose here also can change the perks or the penalties that you receive on each name as you test these out. I suggest picking a name that has no penalties because sometimes they are harder to overcome in-game even with the perks that you can get in-game. Sometimes you may never overcome what you start with. You then choose your difficulty level and that's pretty self-explanatory. And it drops you into a world with a tribe or without a tribe depending on the perks that you have. Now the in-game tutorial is pretty good and it will show you exactly what to do to fulfill quests and how to gather. But here you can see gathering plants is as simple as walking up to something and then pressing F to pick it. And it will go into your inventory. To open the map you press tab and that's where all the in-game selections and options and upgrades can be found as well as tasks for your warriors. To use your warriors to gather items, click on a camp, a yellow camp, which is yours, and click gather. And then you'll have the option to equip your warriors, give them horses, and tell them what to gather while they're out. If you send them to get animal parts, they're going to require bows instead of other weapons. But you can send your warriors with weapons when you send them to gather anything so that they can protect themselves from wild animals or patrols. We'll go over it a little later, but you can also upgrade the amount of items that your warriors will gather in the chief skills upgrades. All of the orders that have been set and all of the warriors that are out from on gathering trips or patrols will show up in the top left corner and you can cancel them at any time. This will make them return immediately to their camp of origin. The rest of these do exactly what they say. Attack, send warriors to another camp, just sends a group to another camp so your numbers can even out so you don't lose warriors and you can add an order to the camp so that they can create or gather an item instead of sending them all out to gather you can set a certain number of items that you want and they will build those for you. Now on the map you can click the location map to find out where you are. Even if you zoom in and out with the scroll wheel or the plus and minus and you forget where you are click on the location button it will take you back. If you're trying to find an item you can do that by going into tab and then typing the item that you're looking for and you can take it and you can put it in your inventory and then you can put it in another camp. It's very easy to do this when you're sitting in another camp and you need to shift around items. I like to keep a lot of my items in certain camps just so that they're organized for me. To add a destination or a marker, you right click when you're on the map. This will put a square on the map and also on your in-game compass when you're outside of the map. The compass will proactively tell you how far you're at from that marker or any other marker or quest markers that are active on your character. This is found along the top and you can also see your horse if you have one wherever you've left it on that compass. In the map, as I said, you can see your patrols as they move around the map and you can cancel or choose to show where they are at in the top left corner 
Now to dive into the skills and inventory of your character. Under inventory, you see what is on your character at that time. It doesn't include what's on your horse or what's in your camps. Under crafting, you'll see what you have bought with your skill points to be able to craft and unlock, which will also, every time you make those, give you more skill points. It goes through all the weapons and different types of arrows, poisons, foods, potions, anything that you can craft will be on this menu. And you can choose at the top to show one of those groups or you can see them all at once. The war paints option, you can choose and you can buy new war paints to give your character different perks. So I choose stamina because I like to do a lot of running and jumping and stabbing and that uses a lot of stamina. But you can adjust your war paints to give you different bonuses. The rare war paints give even better bonuses or different types. And those are found in the store and you can buy those with social points. Under objectives you'll see the quests that you're doing. Or if you get knocked down you'll see where to get your revenge and get your items back from this menu. Now the most complex and important part of the game are under skills. Each of these skills, warrior, scout, chief, or hunter, gives different perks to either your character or the ability to use and manipulate your warriors better. I do have a video specifically on the best ones to get and I will link that below for beginning characters. But I highly suggest looking into the hunter and the chief perks, that way you can use your warriors to do all the heavy lifting and you're able to get more from the quests that you do yourself. Before moving on from skills, take a lot of time to figure out exactly kind of what gameplay you want and then adjust the skills that you buy according to that. The price of each skill that you buy increases exponentially, so at the end you could be paying 15,000 skill points for something you could have bought for 250 at the beginning, so be very cautious to what you buy at the beginning. Now jumping into the social tab, this is where you can get unstuck if your character is stuck and it will take you back to your nearest camp. And we have what's called the trading window. This is where you can take items that you've gained from the game and you can sell them to other players and you can buy stuff from other players also. Every now and then there will be free items or free skill points and you have to put items when you want to sell them into social before you can sell them from here. This is where you'll get items such as your ancestor's bow that you can put on your character. Um, anything that you get and you don't save into your profile you will lose if you don't save it after you buy it or sell it or put it onto your character. Don't forget that you can also find the traders, the French traders, and they will trade you items and you can go back and forth and there's a whole lot of them on the map, so you can use those to find different pieces also aside from looting containers or buying from the social store. A little bit into camp commands. You press tab and you choose a camp from the map and then you can choose what you want your warriors to do from there. The attack option, you can send warriors to attack a fort or settlement. The gather option, we already discussed that. The settle option is where you can take your warriors and you can settle a new part of the map in a different biome or in the same biome, which is those little gray borders. You can send them to get horses or to tame horses and bring those back to camp. You can send your warriors to go on a patrol, which is from camp to camp. Or if you're at a campfire or a camp, you can choose to travel to that camp uh, or to Upgrade that camp, which requires certain items for every upgrade, which increases the amount of warriors that you can have in that camp. You can send them to another camp, which is important because an overloaded camp will lose your warriors and they will leave. And then you can create a war party, which we'll discuss in just a bit. Horse bonding is a pretty cool and intuitive option that we have now, where you can press Z while you're by a horse and you can bond to it. And then you can upgrade that specific horse. Upgrading it, you can change the colors, um, and you can change the different stats that it has depending on its name. And then you can actually upgrade it to put items so it can carry extra stuff. 
to upgrade and heal a horse, you press Z, and then you need hay bait in your inventory to heal or upgrade your horse. To get your horse the experience, you need to fight on that horse and ride that horse pretty much everywhere. I rode all the way across the map once or twice, um, and it upgraded it maybe one or two blocks, so it does take a long time to upgrade your horse. Stamina is very important in this game, and it gives you the ability to hold a bow for longer while you're using concentration, to run for longer, to stab, jump, or roll. At the bottom, the bar will decrease until you have no more stamina and you have to walk. There are many types of weapons in the game, and each is according to a different playstyle. The bows can only shoot certain types of arrows, and the weapons, of course, firearms, can only shoot certain calibers, and you can craft each of these bows except for the Ancestor's Bow, which comes with the Founder's Package. With the weapons, you can find blueprints in crates from the places that you raid, and you can actually craft an upgraded version of those weapons, and they can shoot really far, or some have a scope, and you can take all the parts that you find and you can craft these weapons or trade for those parts. To use the weapons that you have in your inventory, you press 1, then you select the item, and then you select the type of ammo that you want to use with that item. To use the other items that you have, you press number 2, and then you can either select them right there, and then once you let go of number 2, you will consume or drop or use that item in whatever way it's meant to be used. This allows you to use potions before going into battle, or drop a trap. To use those weapons once you have them selected, you right click and then left click to shoot. So right click for zoom and left click to shoot. Now once you've purchased an item such as using a spear or throwing a stone increase or a tomahawk or different uses, you select them by pressing E and then clicking on the skill that you want to use. Make sure that you actually click on it or you'll just continue with your last option. After you selected it, you press and hold G, depending on the skill, to perform that action. To use an external item, you press E, select it, and then hold G. You have to wait for the reticle to close completely on your target before you can release it. Same thing when using uh, the spyglass, you have to select the reticle until it'll select the character. Throw stone is really good for knocking enemies out, smoke herbs makes time pass quickly, Rest will save it. Calling the horse will bring your horse closer to you if it's within probably 200 meters. If not, then you will have to go to a camp and do a fast travel and it will show up where you're at. Concentration lets you slow down time. The tomahawk and the spear allow you to kill an enemy silently with a weapon. And as you saw right there, detect enemies will put a marker on each enemy that's around you that's alive. There's also a burn settlement which will destroy a town as long as there's no more people in it. There are a few others, but you can check those out for yourself. Using C will give you a crouch. Using X will give you a straight down to the ground crouch, and then you press C to get back up again. Using things like the stone throw is similar to using a stun arrow, but it knocks out the person with one shot. One of my favorite options to use, actually. And then there's a little bit about basic combat. You can slash or stab with the knife just by clicking left mouse button, and then you can actually upgrade to grapple with that person, then you can stun them from there. If it's secret, you can just walk up behind them and stun them. The gameplay is what you want it to be. If you want to be a hack and slash, you sure can, and then you can use your guns and be as loud as you want, or you can be stealthy, and if you are just stunning enemies, you get better karma. Sometimes with the traitors and other tribes, that will join you, they require good karma. But again, it's up to you and what you want to do and how you want to play it. The worse karma that you have, the more aggressive the settlers will become and more patrols will come and it might be a little harder than playing a game where you do a lot of stealth and a lot of sneaking and knocking out. I don't want to dedicate a ton of time into the war parties but there are different options within the war party to make them follow you, to make them crouch, or do what, or mimic you to open the war party menu when you have one created. You press 3 and then you click on the left side to choose which war party you want to manage.
from there. But to create a war party, you click on a camp, you click on war parties, and then you will choose how to equip your warriors with horses and what type of weapons. And then you can have several war parties of warriors following you and you can direct them in battle or just have them do exactly what you want. In conjunction with warriors, each camp has a general level of the warriors that are within that camp. You can see that by just hovering over each of those camps and it shows you the average level of those warriors. To upgrade the warriors you need to drop groceries non-poisoned into those camps and then they will eat them after a few days and that will continue to upgrade those warriors. Just like it upgrades your enemies, it can upgrade your warriors. Well, I think that's enough to get everybody started and for a good updated tutorial for the basics of This Land is My Land. Again, I have a ton of videos that go into everything that we discussed here today. Please check them out on my channel. If I miss something, if you have good suggestions for anybody, or if you have any questions, please put them down below. I will link um, some of my other videos in this description. And as usual, thanks for stopping by.